Hello everyone, there is a new robot creature in the lab called Bossy. It is a tentacle mechanism robot that changes its behavior based off of your distance from it. You can actually trick the robot by jumping closer or farther away from it, and it will blink its LEDs in a different pattern before moving its tail. One of my inspirations for creating this robot was to explore some more organic movements, rather than the ones directly driven from a servo. You can see this in action as it swishes its tail. It's quite mesmerizing. Now let's jump in and see how it works. How a tentacle mechanism works is by having a flexible center core with vertebrae along it. The vertebrae have fishing line threaded through the holes, which then get terminated in a knot at the end. For the two opposing sides, there is a servo pushing or pulling the connection. The same thing is done with the remaining lines, so we can effectively move the tentacle in all directions. For Botbait's tail, it is a two-stage tentacle mechanism, meaning there is another group of vertebra vertebrae that is being controlled, in addition to the ones at the end. All of the pieces are 3D printed, except for the screws and sugru. The sugru is used for the flexible middle piece. In order to use the sugru, I designed a mold. It took numerous experiments to get the shape right, balancing strength with flexibility. Here's the final mold in Autodesk Inventor. It revolves various rectangles in a circle to carve out the shapes, then makes them smooth with fillets. The hubs are what the sugru attaches to. It's also important for these parts to be smooth and have areas that the sugru can really bond around. Here are what the other pieces look like in CAD to show how they are designed as well. In this case, we used Autodesk Inventor to design all of the pieces. So, this is the vertebrae here and these are what make up the tail for the tentacle. And the very last vertebrae, or the first vertebrae that attaches to the robot, gets attached using this piece. So, as you can see, there's these little semicircles here. Those are what lets the vertebrae get attached to it just using hot glue. You can see what it looks like in the sketch here. Just a pattern of these things. The sides for the box look like this in CAD, so quite simplistic. You can see the servo holder extends outwards a bit more. This is what the sketch looks like. You can tell that originally I wanted to have a few more screw uh, areas on the bottom, but it worked out that we only needed one on each side. So that was a lot better. This is sketch for this little hole. You can see it through there. And the other side is pretty much similar to that side, except just without the servos, so that's pretty straightforward. The corners here is what make the uh, box get held together <laughs> with the corners. This one is pretty simple to design, so basically started out with this, 
Then there's two little areas to get extruded upwards. That's the first extrusion. The second extrusion for the middle part is right here. And then this part. Oops, picked the wrong one. Oh no, wait, that was the right one. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Who knows? Ah, oh, here it is. Those are the holes for that side. Yeah, easy. Here's what the servo horn looks like in CAD. It's important to get this uh, circle piece so that you could reach the screw of the center of the servo in case you needed to take it off, take it on, or put it back on. Here's the LED holder. One of the one of my more favorite parts because you can tell it's being sort of extruded in every which way direction. It's also a very thin part, so quite flexible, but printing it in ABS makes it so that it doesn't break off very easily. So I started out with just this side of it, and then this part here is what will be extruded outwards. Sensor holder is similar to the LED holder, so basically all the same concepts. And here's the hanger piece, so this one is the one that goes uh, perpendicular to the wall, and the one that goes actually on the wall looks like this, and as you can see there are these little ridges here that let the other, uh, this piece, slide into it. And there's a bit of leeway room so that if the build happens, or if the print happens to warp, then you can still hopefully fit it in without having to sand it down. Just so what it looks like in sketch. Pretty simple. <laughs> And last but not least was this one. This one was mainly just getting all the dimensions right in the sketch for the board mounting holes for all the electronics. It looks flimsy but it's quite strong when it's all attached to the boards and it won't really snap. So yeah, that's it for the design. I lucked out with many of the designs. There weren't a lot of times where they had to be modified and reprinted. Once the pieces were printed, it was time to put everything together. The first part is the Sugru molds. How the Sugru mold actually worked was that with the mold, I coated it with some dishwasher soap first so that it could be used as a release agent for the Sugru. Then I uh, packed in a, a layer of sugru here, as well as added some sugru to the hubs, and as you can see the holes which allow the sugru to uh, access through the hub and bond to it, basically. Then put this like this, and add in the other hub. Then add the top part to the mold and basically squeeze down, take off the excess sugru from all around the sides, and then uh, whenever it would come out, and after a few times of like getting rid of the excess sugru, it would then look something like this. You have to let it set for 24 hours but after that it becomes very strong and flexible. So as you can see these are the hubs and then this part was the molded part. This then gets attached to the vertebrae. So basically like this uh, I added hot glue on it to make sure it would stay in. These then get chained together to form the tentacle which is this.
the end of the vertebrae gets attached to this holder piece on the bottom of the cube. This then screws into each of the four sides. Of course, before the sides were all enclosed, the servos were added. On the servos themselves are these customized horns where the fishing line gets attached. For attaching the line, I secured the knots with some clear nail polish. One time I had to modify the tension a bit, so I used acetone to remove the nail polish and undo the knot. After all that and adding the servos, the corners were added to the square and it was screwed together. As for the RGB LED holders, the LEDs were added in first and then the assembly attached onto the side. For most of the building stage, I had the electronics loosely tied up to a lamp and sort of flopping around. I then designed a piece that attaches to all the mounting holes of the boards in order to keep them all in place. Finally, the last step was to build a mount for bot bait to attach to the wall. It's only two pieces stuck together with hot glue, which then gets duct taped to the wall. The electronics for bot bait are not very complex. The brain is an Arduino Mega. We went with the Mega specifically because of all the output pins for the LEDs. The servos are controlled with the Adafruit servo controller. It was really important in this robot that the servos weren't twitching, so it works great. Next up are these proto boards. They are just here to organize things and the resistors for the LEDs. The LEDs that are poking through the vertebrae are actually purple and pink colored in real life. They were given to me by a friend crafter, so I saved them for a special project like this one. One of the things that helped organize all the wires and stop them from being unplugged was to attach mail headers and hot glue to the solder points. It was pretty fun trying to solder it all together because it was sort of flying in midair and I had to hold on to both the solder and the wire and the header all in one hand. Uh, I don't re recommend this, but yeah, anyway. The basic code for this robot is pretty straightforward. For the servos, I just tell the servo controller what pulse width to send then delay a little to make sure it moves to the position. For the ultrasonic sensor, it sets the pin high to send out a sound, then sets it low and waits until it receives the sound burst back. The amount of time in between can be used to calculate the distance. The RGB LEDs are not controlled by PWM, so they can only be turned on or off. But for fading the tentacle LEDs, it uses some code that I adapted from Manoi, my humanoid robot. It iterates through 255 times, and depending on the brightness from and to value, it will either increment or de-increment when the skip every variable modulo equals to zero. It ensures that all of the LEDs reach their final brightness at the same time, so it won't look very glitchy. Last but not least is the button. Since I didn't have a capacitor to help debounce it, this is done in software. Botbait has a sort of creepy obsession with distance. It changes its stance depending on how close you are to it, and if you jump between distance thresholds, then it will light up differently. Also, as an added extra that no one really knows about, there is an internal dialogue that is happening on the serial monitor. Maybe at some point it will be useful, but for now it is just funny. I had some other ideas for behaviors as well, such as one that would bait the human to press the button three times by blinking or moving three times. It ended up being too confusing, so I prefer this current behavior. It's important that the robot is still moving even if no one is around, just to show that it is alive. And if humans come closer, then they will be able to interact with its behavior. All in all, to sum up, 
the bot bait experience in a few words. It has been interesting. After figuring out the Sugru experiment, it was really cool to see the organic movement. And the movement is actually somewhat predictable. After playing with it for a while, I was able to get the tentacle to swing in a circle and quite rapidly swing back and forth. I really like this style of movement and definitely going to use it in my next robots as, along with experimenting in ways to get feedback from it. Here are the five lessons that I learned from bot bait. Creating behaviors for robots that aren't as anthropomorphizable is tricky. Working on hanging or floating robots requires a lot of patience, especially when soldering. Making the center core twist or rotate as little as possible helps the predictability of the movement. Elex electronics don't have to be enclosed and hidden away. It can look cool. Finally, lots of work and experimenting. You can download the open source hardware for BotBait on Robobird.com. Also, if you would like to help me make more robots, check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash robotgirl. Thanks so much for watching!